And the uh, next presenter uh, is Nicola, Mr. Nicola Schubert uh, from TAS France. So we prepared uh, a pre-recorded -pre pile and uh, so which is titled on uh, 3GPP NTN standardization uh, past, current and the future. So let me introduce uh, Mr. Nicola Schubert. So he worked for uh, Nokia and Alcatel and uh, he joined uh, Thales Alenia Space uh, to develop satellite payload and uh, he is the lead uh, representative of uh, Thales in 3GPP uh, TSG RAN. Uh, he is uh, the rapport for satellite integration in 5G. Yes, let's, let's welcome him. Good morning, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to provide you a, a status of the 3GPP non-terrestrial network uh, standardization. Uh, my name is Nicolas Schubert. I work for Thales uh, Linear Space as a 5G solution line manager and also uh, working in 3GPP as rapporteur of this uh, NTN uh, um, work item. During my presentation, I will first uh, provide you with a set of principles associated to 5G satellite networks. Then I will uh, uh, provide the uh, roadmap of the standard development. And last, uh, let us project ourselves uh, with the satellite in 6G and the possi possible uh, vision. So, uh, first of all, I, I would like to uh, present uh, the difference between uh, interworking and integration that we'll use these terms uh, during this presentation. Interworking, according to the Cambridge Dictionary, uh, means to interconnect, uh, exchange information between two things. So in the context of 5G, it's uh, like uh, interconnecting uh, cellular and satellite networks. So to be able to exchange information between those two systems uh, with or without interworking function. The integration is uh, an action of combining uh, things. So typically, you could combine a mobile network together with a satellite network in order to achieve a common goal like seamless global coverage. In order to illustrate uh, 5G satellite networks, um, here is a, a small picture that uh, describes the, um, the two access technologies, the satellite and the mobile one, that are combined in to serve, uh, for instance, uh, uh, different kind of terminals. It could be handset, or it could be a very small aperture terminal uh, connected to an intermediate node itself, uh, providing uh, uh, access to and user devices. So you see that indirect connectivity refer to uh, end user devices that will not see directly a satellite but will see a first an intermediate node as opposed to direct connectivity where you have a end user devices like a smartphone that would be directly connected via RF to a satellite for instance. So there are different use cases for the 5G satellite networks, depending on the kind of devices that are targeted. And the overall objective of NTN is to offer a complementing role to terrestrial network access, complementing in uh, coverage, for instance. In, in this slide, uh, you see um, 
this table tried to classify these uh, the, the three kind of of uh, I would say scenarios for satellite networks. So you have two direct connectivity scenarios, depending on whether you want to address IoT devices or um, uh, smartphones, as well as car drone mounted devices. So uh, this will allow you to uh, provide narrow band or wide band services. Uh, wide band refer to a few megabits per second. And, um, and it also distinguished by the uh, radio protocol being considered for IoT devices or smartphone, which is going to be using uh, 5G neo radio. Also is indirect connectivity as being uh, um, is going to target some terminals which are not end user devices but could be connected to some kind of in intermediate node and this kind of uh, satellite network could provide broadband services up to 100 megabits per second either through geosynchronous or non-geosynchronous orbit satellite and uh, we see on the two last column that uh, 5G neo radio is being uh, protocol is being considered, while for the IoT devices, uh, this is more 4G uh, narrowband IoT or EMTC radio protocol being considered. But interestingly, the 3GPP technology uh, can be considered for all kind of satellite networks, whatever bands, orbit, or devices, as well as services. This is currently the roadmap of the different activities being carried out uh, in 3GPP and related to NTN, uh, NTN covering uh, satellite as well as high altitude platforms. We started in release 15 uh, with some initial studies, and now we are in release 17. Uh, to the complete uh, near to the completion because these standards should be finalized in March 2022 and uh, and then we'll start again another release with some additional features but release 17 is actually the first release in which satellite is being supported so let's um, dive a little bit into this uh, release 17 and the NTN standard. Actually, this, uh, there are a number of features which are being defined so that the radio protocol of SUGPB can support satellite, uh, which are very well known for long propagation delays, large Doppler effects, and moving cells potentially moving cells. Uh, so the challenge is to define these uh, features that will allow to mitigate uh, these characteristics. Of course, we need to consider a service continuity between terrestrial network and non-terrestrial network uh, and vice versa. We have assumed uh, as part of the uh, of this release, that UEs are equipped with GNSS receivers, um, FDD is being uh, considered on the satellite uh, links. Uh, we are we have um, defined uh, the system based on Earth's fixed uh, tracking area, and uh, the release seventeen is applicable for. Earth uh, for a transparent uh, payload architecture, generating either Earth moving or Earth fixed radio cells. But all LEO and GEO are being considered. Um, in addition, the uh, release 17 is focusing on. Um, uh, frequency bands below six gigahertz. 
as part of the release 18, which is going to soon to, to start so next year, a number of features have been, uh, have been uh, uh, proposed. I, I'll give you a focus on a few of them. Well, first of all, uh, this feature will enable to uh, provide a trusted UE location uh, determination uh, scheme to better support uh, or to optimize the system uh, with respect to um, regulated services like lawful intercept, emergency call, or public warning systems. Another feature which is quite uh, important is the deployment of uh, new radio protocol, uh, NTN uh, friendly, uh, in above 10 gigahertz bands for, uh, for those, uh, uh, for typically high throughput satellites targeting VSAT or ASIM kind of terminals. Uh, some other enhancements are being uh, considered to optimize the, the services. Uh, on the IoT, um, one, uh, one important feature which is going to be considered is the uh, store and forward uh, so that a service based on a Leo constellation could start with uh, a few satellite that will not necessarily be able to connect to a, a, a given uh, gateway. So they have to have the capability to collect uh, the data from the different uh, user equipments and then uh, uh, forward the uh, data to, uh, to the network when the satellite encounter uh, a gateway. On this slide, um, there were other enhancements that were considered, especially for the new radio uh, protocol, uh, NTN uh, new radio. So uh, the possibility to uh, implement multi-connectivity and carrier aggregation between, um, between two satellite orbit uh, sat uh, or between satellite and mobile access. Some uh, features to optimize the peak average power ratio are, are also be considered coordinated transmission across satellites um, is, is also an ID. And in terms of new capabilities, uh, the support of UE without any GNSS uh, receiver. Uh, regenerative payload are also being considered, including edge computing on board, and a more disruptive uh, feature to enable uh, spectrum coexistence between NTN and TN. Um, so these are possible features that could be uh, considered in the uh, release after release 18. From the lessons learned on this uh, standard development, we can, uh, we can state now the integration of satellite with mobile systems is now possible with this uh, SUGPP release 17 NTN standard. This standard uh, development is the result of a joint effort between uh, uh, satellite and mobile industry stakeholders, which have all uh, benefits uh, since uh, satellite will help uh, mobile to provide global service continuity and resiliency, while the mobile enable uh, satellite to access a unified and large ecosystem and in order to drive down the, the cost uh, of uh, the systems and especially the, the terminals. Uh, we see a, a great support from telecom user groups um, uh, more in the professional user groups, uh, so like public safety, transport, uh, automotive, uh, uh, and utilities, which are calling for a seamless combination of satellite and mobile systems through mobility or multi-connectivity across the two axes, and the support of all 5G features uh, across the access technologies. So really, we can say that the NTN 
is going to pave the way to new business opportunities for uh, the satellite industry, but also for the mobile industry um, in addressing uh, uh, key requirements from the, uh, uh, the, the verticals. And last is the uh, a possible vision for satellite in 6G. So we have seen that uh, prior to 5G, uh, interoperability between satellite and terrestrial network was, uh, was possible. Uh, but through this uh, standard development, um, integration with the combination of both mobile and satellite uh, access network are possible. Uh, through the development of these uh, features on top of the uh, 5G new radio, which, were in, which was initially uh, optimized for terrestrial network. But we, uh, we are preparing ourselves um, uh, for, for the 6G, where possibly uh, we could have a design optimized um, taking into account uh, the characteristics of both uh, terrestrial and satellite components in order to meet uh, some common goals, like, uh, as we said, um, uh, service continuity, um, resiliency, but also under uh, increasing scarcity of uh, resources. And I want to uh, thank you very much for your attention. And here you have uh, my details if you want to contact me. This work has been supported by the European Space Agency um, through the Alex uh, project, uh, where you have this URL to, to get information about. I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Nicolas Schwere. Uh, he made a, a presentation about the uh, provision of 6G uh, MTN.